This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm Cameron Harris, and this is episode number 17. Today, we're going to start doing something pretty fun in SketchUp. We're going to start learning about colors and textures, specifically painting with the bucket tool in SketchUp. This is the way you add colors and textures and really just bring your whole model to life, because up until now, the stuff we've been working in has all been just white because that's the default color in SketchUp. But today we're gonna to start adding some color. Now before we get started, I just wanna remind you that if you haven't been following along with us in our previous lessons and you don't have a living room of your own to practice on, you can always download the living room that we've been working on as it is right now. Just download the SketchUp project from our website and you can just follow along with us today. So let's get started. So here I am back in the living room model we've been working on for the last several episodes. And today we're going to add some color to the model. We're going to have a little bit of fun and actually do some painting. And we're going to lay some floors. We're going to uh, do some fabrics on the couch. All kinds of really cool stuff. And we're going to do that using uh, the bucket tool in SketchUp. It's a brand new tool. We haven't talked about this one before. Uh, you can find it in several different locations, of course, as usual, up in the toolbar. Uh, it's right next to the tape measure tool. Looks like a bucket with some paint spilling out of it. We also have it over in the tool palette over here. Same thing, just below the selection tool. Or, as you know, I love keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcut for the bucket tool is B. And you'll notice when we switch to the bucket tool, we automatically get this. This is the color picker. Uh, in this case, this is the built-in color picker that you find in all OS X applications if you're on a Mac. Uh, if you're on a PC, it's going to look slightly different, but um, you're going to have the same basic components. Uh, so up at the top here, we have several different areas where we can choose colors. In this case, this is my personal favorite. This is a color wheel, but we also have uh, some sliders here, uh, spectrum, or this is another really fun one, just a crayon box where you can just click on a crayon and choose turquoise or clover or cayenne. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go back to the uh, color wheel here. And the first thing let's do is let's add some color to the walls. So I'll just move the color wheel over to, over to the right here so we're not covering up our model. So let's think here. What color do we want these walls to be? Well, why don't we make them maybe a nice yellow? So what we'll do is, uh, for yellow, let's go into uh, the color wheel here. We'll drag this slider here. This controls the brightness of the color. If you have it all the way down at the bottom, it's black. All the way up here, bright red. Let's maybe drag it over here. Get a little bit of nice gold. So you see we have this really nice gold color here. Maybe back off a little bit, kind of buttery. Let's see how that looks. So to use the paint bucket tool, um, First of all, make sure that you are using the bucket tool. Even though you have the color palette over here automatically when you switch to the bucket tool, if I switch back to the selection tool, you notice the color wheel and the color palette stays there. So make sure that you are, in fact, on the bucket tool. You'll notice because your cursor turns and turns in that little bucket. And uh, the bucket tool only applies to faces. Lines, you can't change the color of. But that doesn't really matter. Faces are where you're going to notice the color most anyway. So what you do is, with the color that you want selected in the color wheel over here, uh, just click on the face that you want to paint. So in this case, I'll just click on this wall right here. Anywhere on the face, click. There we go. So now we've turned that wall yellow. Now that's a pretty intense yellow. You can see here, that's really intense actually. I'm looking for something a little bit more subtle. So what we can do is we can just go over here into the color wheel and we'll just back off in the saturation, make it a little bit more almost buttery. And we can just paint over that again just by clicking on the face again. That's pretty nice. That's very nice actually. Nice warm, got a little bit of an orange thing going on here. And you notice that depending on where we position ourselves in the model, uh, the color looks slightly different. That's because SketchUp is automatically shading these walls. So like you notice that if I point at the floor here, the floor is a brighter white than these walls here. So it depends on where you are. This kind of just helps separate the walls and give it that natural kind of shaded look. 
Best way to get an idea of what the color actually looks like is to look at the wall straight on, like this. And I kind of like that color. Let's go ahead and paint the rest of the walls here. I'll just click here. All these various walls just kind of rotate around. There we go. And one last wall right here. Good. So I really like that. So we got kind of a nice almost peachy kind of thing going on here. Next up, I'm going to talk about uh, textures. So these solid colors are fine and you can do you can create any solid color you want. But if you're in SketchUp, you notice up here in the toolbar on the on the colors palette, we have that kind of brick thing right here. What is that? Well, if you click on it, this is the textures palette. And these are a bunch of textures that you can apply to walls that are actually just photos uh, that are built in with SketchUp. Completely bundled in with SketchUp. Uh, you can also download more from the SketchUp website if you want. And if you click this little drop down here, you have all these different categories. You have metal, roofing, sketchy, stone. You can scroll up here a little bit. Uh, let's say we want to do some floor here. So let's say we want to do a hardwood floor. We can just scroll down to wood here. And you notice, I'm going to pull the colors tab uh, or palette over here and just grab it by its corner, make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. We have all these little icons here of all these different woods that are built into SketchUp. And what you can do is you can click on one and you can see you get kind of a preview up here. Um, it's sometimes it's a little bit difficult to tell what really you're looking at. If I shrink it down, it's sometimes a little bit easier, but not always. So let's see here. I'm looking for kind of a lighter color. Let's see here. That's kind of a cool looking one looking at the thumbnail. So I'll go ahead and shrink the color palette back down, move it over here. And now, uh, to paint with a texture, it's the same exact procedure as painting with a solid color. All we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we're in the bucket tool and click once on the floor. And you can see that when we do that, this texture applies to the whole floor. Now the thing that makes a texture a texture is that it's an image that can be what's called tiled. Really there's only one image except it's being duplicated across this entire entire floor. And if you look closely you can actually sometimes see the seams between the photos. But if it's a good texture and this one's really good, you really can't tell where one photo ends and another photo begins. Really, really difficult to tell. And uh, you can actually create your own textures if you want, but we're going to co uh, cover that in a later episode. For now, we're just going to work with the built-in textures, and there are a lot of them. Now, i got to be honest, I really like this wood, but now I'm not so wild about the color of the walls. It's kind of, the whole room is kind of looking a little bit too, uh, too monochrome. It's all looking the same color. What if we were to make the walls maybe a nice deep rich red? That's a really nice color. In my house, we actually have a couple walls that are painted that color. So let's go back to the, the crayon box. We're going to use a crayon box this time. And this cayenne color here looks like a good place to start. Let's click that. That's actually pretty nice. If I go back to the color wheel, I can tweak it a little bit, maybe back off the saturation just a little bit, make it a little bit brighter. So now, of course, I could go through and I could repaint these walls here. But I really like that color. But that means I would have to click over all these walls again. This is a nice little tip. When you're clicking with the paint bucket tool, you can actually use some modifier keys to adjust what exactly it is you're painting. So like normally, if you just click on a single face, you're going to just color that face. But holding down the option key will do something different. Let's try a little experiment here. I'm going to hold down the option key or the alt key, and I'm going to click on one of these walls. And look at that. Every single wall that was colored that kind of peach color has changed to red. When you hold down the option key, what happens is every face in SketchUp that is painted with that same color or texture will be changed. So if I undo that, you'll notice the walls are all peach again. And this wouldn't work if there was one wall that was a slightly different shade. I would have to go back and do that one manually. But because these are all exactly the same color, just hold down the Option key, click once, 
they all get painted over. This is a really nice way uh, to change your mind later on in the model, but be careful because keep in mind that if any other th wall was covered colored that same um, color, it would change that one too. So for example, let's say I want to color these outside walls here, like the outside of the house with this red as well. If I held down the option key and click there, you notice the entire thing, not just the outer walls, but also this top wall here, underneath, everything got changed because all of these faces are the same shade of white. Now you might think, well, wait a second, the furniture inside the model is colored that same shade of white as well. Why didn't they change when you did that? Well, that's because uh, models that are grouped aren't affected uh, by the option key thing unless you're actually inside the model which we're actually gonna talk about next, but uh, if it's in its own group, so for example, all these walls out here, the floor, the walls, everything is all its own group. It's actually ungrouped, but that's kind of like being in the ungrouped group, if that makes any sense. They are all going to be affected together. Whereas the, the uh, sofa, the chair, the table, they are grouped, they will not be affected unless I explicitly tell SketchUp to affect them. So let's do that next. I really like where this red wall is going. Let's start uh, painting the couch. Now for the couch, I'm actually going to use a texture. I'm gonna go back into the textures palette. And this time I'm going to choose, scroll up, we have uh, carpet and textiles. So these are all the fabrics that SketchUp has bundled with it. Let's try this green one here. If I click once, we'll look at that. That's interesting because just by clicking once on the group, Everything within that group was changed to match that color. I wasn't holding down the option key or anything like that. Just clicking once on the group, if you're outside the group, affects the whole group. Now if I undo that and switch over to the selection tool and double click on the group, see once I, I single click on the group, it selects a whole thing because it's a group. I double click on it, I can go in, and now I'm back down to just raw faces and lines. That's all. Now if I go back, to the bucket tool and start clicking, it's only affecting certain faces. Or I could use the option key and paint them all. So if you want to get really detailed with groups, you can just double click on the group and go into it and then just uh, use the selection tool and click out of the group to get out of it. And that will paint it. Uh, it but in this case, because I want the whole couch to be the same thing, I could just click once on the group outside of the group and it would change the whole group. And in case you were wondering if I could say the word group more times in a single sentence, just wait. <laughs> I can. So let's go over here and use it with some more groups. So now I have the table group and the chair group. Let's start with the table group. And I'm going to go back to the woods category right here. And I'm going to go with a slightly darker wood for this. Let's see here. This one right here looks kind of interesting. Let's try this. Clicking once on the group, even though I don't... I'm not in the edit group mode. I'm outside of the group, just click once. Very nice, that's a nice wood. I'm gonna use the selection tool and click off of it so I don't get that blue line around it. That's actually a very, very, very nice uh, wood for that table, I like that. Let's do the same thing to the chair, but let's get a little bit more interesting with the chair. In this case, I'm actually gonna double click on the chair group, and I'm now in the group edit mode, so I'm only affecting the chair and I'm back down to the basic faces and lines mode. Very nice. So let's go ahead and switch over to the bucket tool and I've still got that wood selected. So I'm going to click on this face here and just start painting these parts here. Rotate around. And I'm just going to paint the seat of the chair and this little back of the chair right here. I'm just going to hover around, make sure I get all of these faces. The nice thing is that the default texture or color for all these faces in SketchUp is white. So if you're painting it in, it becomes pretty obvious pretty quickly uh, what you haven't painted because it's white. Now in this case, I really like this, but I want to kind of make this chair a little bit more interesting. I want the these little vertical pieces here, the legs and 
and the little uh, supports for the back of the chair to be a lighter wood color. So I'm going to go back over into the woods palette here, and this looks kind of interesting. Let's see what this looks like. This is kind of interesting. This is kind of a almost like a raw plywood kind of effect. It's actually kind of interesting. This could be almost like a, a very natural kind of a green living style chair. So just you know, if I were to color this whole chair that dark wood, it would look more like a formal dining chair. This is doing something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. Uh, so you can see how textures can really change the mood of a model. And they actually add quite a bit of realism to it. I'm just going to finish that one off there. Very nice, very nice. Switch back to the selection tool, double click out of it. And that looks pretty cool, I think. Very nice. And now I, this actually kind of makes me want to do the same thing to the legs of the table. So I'm going to go back into the uh, edit group mode for the table so I can select just these legs. And well, let's say I've already got that same texture selected here, but let's say I was in something else. Let's say I was in vegetation, for example, and I had a completely different piece of wood selected, a completely different um, texture selected, excuse me, and I couldn't remember which one was for that leg. Well, there's actually a way you can actually sample the color or the texture from another object, even if that object is, is in a completely different group. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. This works pretty much all the time. Make sure you're in the paint bucket tool and we're going to use a modifier this time. Instead of option though, we're going to hold down the command key. It's the command key on a Mac. I believe it's the uh, control key on a PC. Just hold down command or control and you notice that the bucket turns into an eyedropper. So this is actually going to pull the texture or the color from whatever object we click on next. So if I were to click on, say for example, this floor right here, even though we're in group edit mode and the floor has no texture because it's all kind of grayed out, it still samples it. You look up in the top of the color palette here, it sampled that floor texture. I click on the wall here, it sampled that red color. If I click on this lighter part of the chair here, it samples that exact same texture. And, and now, I release the command key, it goes back to the normal uh, paint bucket tool. I can just click on these legs here and just go face by face and just color in on those legs. Very nice. And now I can just double click outside the model with the selection tool, get out of it. There we go. Very, very nice. I like those textures. And you can see how our model has really just come to life. This isn't looking so much like a boring old all white model now. It's looking more like an actual room. It's really looking very nice now. And you know, you could, you personally, you might change a different color for the walls. You go with a different fabric for the couch. You go with a solid color for the couch. Different floors. You can color the outside of these walls. Whatever you want. Uh, this is just a guideline for you. This is really kind of where, one of my favorite parts of SketchUp actually, because it's so creative. And this is really a kind of an interesting um, technique, particularly if you're modeling, say, a remodel of a room. And you want to see, okay, what would that room look like if it was painted painted this color? Like, I love really kind of bold colors in a room. I love reds and blues and greens. I'm not such a big fan of all white rooms, just per me personally. So I love to paint, you know, living rooms and dining rooms, all these really bright, bold colors. But you want to make sure that the colors are actually going to look good in there and that they're not going to clash or it's going to be too much. So, you know, for example, I, I at first thought that that kind of peachy, yellowy color was going to look nice in here, but I changed my mind. And it's way easier to paint over things in SketchUp than it is in real life. Well, I hope you guys found this episode useful. Adding colors and textures to your model is really a fun thing to do, and it really just brings them all to life. Way better than just a boring old white model. Until next time, be sure to visit us at www.harwebpodcast.com. We've got our brand new monthly network newsletter that tells you about all of the shows we do on the Harwood Podcast Network. And we've also just launched our brand new network store. 
If you go to our website, you can see that we now have DVD versions of all of our shows for sale, including SketchUp. So if you want to get DVD versions of your favorite shows, go right ahead and check us out there as well. And if you have any questions or comments for me personally about the show, you can send me an email at Cameron at HarwoodPodcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.